We just have a quick question here from Kerrick who asks, how swing traders um, can better manage their trades when there is consistently um, light catalyst in the market, so the market isn't really going anywhere, um, or when you might have contradicting uh, short-term catalysts that's just causing a lot of range-bound moves in the market. So how can you manage swing trades when the market just isn't really doing anything? Um, I think this scenario that you're describing, Kerry, it can probably be one of the most frustrating things when you're holding a position over the medium term, um, especially if your bias is still intact, you know, but the short-term sentiment just isn't playing ball and you have a lot of choppy price action or range-bound moves. Now, there's a couple of ways I'll basically look at this type of situation. Firstly, the question for the range-bound move will be very important. So always, you know, reassess whether the reason for entering the trade is still valid or whether something has maybe changed that has invalidated your original bias. Now, even if the market has just been moving range bound, um, but the reason for entering has changed, then it's always good to just liquidate that position. Alternatively, when uh, it, it's, it's more tricky is when the bias is still intact from a medium term point of view, but you have short term catalyst that's you know, some positives and negatives that basically keeps the pair range bound. That can be really frustrating. And I think when it comes down to that, it becomes more of a psychological issue than a trade management one. Um, you know, at least that's how it's been for me. You, you see, when the market just oscillates up and down, ebbing and flowing without going in a clear direction, it can really eat away um, at your nerves. And oftentimes what happens is that the trade wears more on your emotions than it does on the bias, right? So it's dipping into and out of profit. And you eventually, because of that, you start managing it like a day trade. You start babying it like, like a day trade. And eventually, you just close it out for a tiny loss or a tiny win. And because it's been underwater for a long time, you just, you know, you have that, that sigh of relief that, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm just going to take, take this tiny loss or this tiny win. I don't want to sit with this trade anymore. Now, um, th there's always... You know something important around risk management as well you know as traders we're not really traders first and foremost we we actually risk managers first and foremost so you see a particular trade idea and then you need to manage the risks involved in that particular trade so most traders when they start trading they try to sell themselves um, and often other people you know on their trade idea so i have this great trade idea and you find three or five reasons why it's a good idea and you basically try to convince yourself that okay this rationale is sorted um, but what often happens is that you'll discount all the risks that's associated with the trade. You know, so when, when you're faced with a risk to the trade idea, uh, uh, normally a, a beginner trader will basically just dismiss it and say, okay, you know, um, I, I'm sticking with this trade, even though the risks are clearly pointing to um, pointing against it. Um, for, for example, these days, you know, when I look at a trade idea, I, I'll always start from the risk side versus the the positive side so that doesn't make me a a pessimist by any mean but what i mean is when when i look at a trade idea my first thing to consider isn't isn't why it's a good idea the first thing to consider is all the risks associated with it so basically you know what would make me wrong with this trade idea or does the market have a reason right now to be selling or buying against me in this particular trade idea and if the risks are fewer than the positives then i usually go with it um, and then the vice versa, you know, if you see that the risks far outweigh the positives, then it's a good idea maybe to just wait. Maybe maybe the trade might work, but the timing might just not be right for that particular trade. Now, of course, you know, that's a major advantage that you have in swing trading above day trading. When you when you swing, when you day trade and you have that thing coming out of over the squawk, you just need to jump in. There's no time to to think through these things where with sw swing trading, you have a lot of time to really digest the idea and make sure that you're comfortable with it. Um, and that also brings it down to, once again, just risk management, right? So have you, have you, have you taken, um, have you accepted the risk with that particular trade? We, we actually have a good example recently. Let's go to uh, trade ideas. I asked Dan to load a trade idea for me for, um, for the CAD yen. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So CAD yen on the 19th. Um, I looked for a long entry from 78.50, stop loss at 77.90 and 81.50. I think we still have this marked on the chart. Uh, okay, so here we go with CAD yen. So in this trade idea, I was looking for an entry at 78.50, a stop at 77.90 uh, and then a take profit at 81.50. Now, 
the the rationale for this particular trade was if we just quickly put put on oil is we had this massive rally in oil markets due to a couple of factors that's obviously listed in the rationale we had that massive run up but we didn't see any type of upside in the CAD yen as you would normally expect from this type of move in oil so my thinking with this was that you know even though um, virus numbers are ticking up etc if we don't see any nationwide massive lockdowns and we don't see equity markets really breaking down and real concerns about supply and demand for oil changing then that should eventually lead the CAD yen to join this upside in oil prices now the challenge with this type of um, swing trade is if you have a look at the we entered on the 19th right so that was um, over here and if you have a look at this this was a very frustrating frustrating couple of sessions um, with this thing not really going anywhere and the reason of course for that was because you had lots of positives and negatives that basically kept on banging against this trade. So you had lots of negatives with the virus and lots of positives with positive data, etc. And that just kept this thing going sideways and sideways. Now, a lot of time what, what, what you'll have with this type of trade is if you've really accepted the risk and you've placed your stop, let's say, at 77.90, the quickest, the quickest that you'll realize whether you have accepted the risk is once this thing starts going against you and moves towards that, um, uh, that stop loss, you start to quickly recognize whether you really accepted the risk in the trade or not. And that's normally a good barometer for you. You know, if you if you really think that this is a good spot for a stop loss and you've managed your risk and you say that, OK, I'm OK with taking the risk on this trade, whatever that is, if it's a half percent, one percent, whatever. Once you've really accepted that, then you then you can really just, you know, take some room give the give the trade some room to breathe give yourself some room to breathe but what traders often do is they want to take a swing trade from this level but they want to place their stop you know just below this recent swing over here and when it starts going against them they start stressing you know and you start you know contemplating whether it's really a good idea um, but but if you if you um if you take that slightly wider stop i mean you could have even taken a wider stop let's say a, a below that swing it would have still been a good trade in terms of risk reward but what oftentimes what traders do they want to make more if they write so they'll they'll take a super super tight stop somewhere over here and you know because they want to make you know 15 to 1 instead of 1 to 1 and they often get stopped out and it's it's a frustrating experience where if you if you if you can take that wider stop and even if you risk 1% on that wider stop you give yourself just that little bit extra room to breathe um, and as well as the trade room to breathe that even if you do, even if the market goes against you all this way and hits your stop, you're only losing whatever you, you decided was okay to risk. Let's say it's half a percent to 1% or whatever. You're okay with risking that. You're okay with losing that. And they just give you some peace of mind and allow you to better, you know, analyze the market for what it's showing you instead of, you know, being focused on that, um, on that risk for the trade, so to speak. Um, so you see beginner traders they often want to they, they want to make more which which means they they try to risk less in terms of of uh, of giving them some wider stops to work with and that can cause a lot of frustration as well so i think you know breaking this down into a couple of tips the first one is if it is moving range bound always make sure firstly whether that original bias is still intact if it is and you start you know it's frustrating if it's moving sideways make make sure that you're okay that you've accepted the risk on that trade make sure that you've placed it at a um, at a stop level that's uh, that's acceptable not only for for the trade but also acceptable for your emotions so you know if, if, don't go place a stop here um, and risking you know 10 percent on it type of thing you know you, you still want to make sure that you're risking in your means of risking but but give the trade some 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 room to breathe even if that means making a little bit less on the trade um, but it means you know, you know taking the trade for 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 what the trade is worth and not for for the for the type of impact that it might have on your on your emotions so that's just a, a couple of uh, a couple of thoughts and tips from my side um on uh, on how you can potentially you know better manage these types of environments where you just have that that sideways movement with the market not going anywhere always firstly just ask yourself whether that original bias is still intact and if it is you know is it causing stress because of a risk factor is is the risk manageable um and if it is you know it's it's normally better just to just to take a breather and and, and know that you've you've done the work and now the market needs to do the rest